Okay, yeah, so uh, if there are no uh, more questions so far, yeah, then uh, let us continue uh, with our study. We continue studying regressions. Actually, it is uh, a large topic, uh, in fact, and um, let me uh, let me uh, discuss new parts of this topic. Uh, so we continue with linear regressions. And uh, today we will discuss the following problem. Uh, previously, we discussed that we have uh, some data. Uh, we have some variables in this data and we uh, are trying to uh, figure out some dependencies between one variables and another variables. Uh, and uh, in linear regressions, in linear models, we assume that uh, these relations uh, is linear. So uh, we believe that uh, we have some variable y and we believe that um, some linear model uh, holds. So uh, y is linearly dependent uh, on some other variables uh, something like this. So this is just a linear, linear regression model, linear model. This is what we discussed previously. Uh, y uh, is called dependent variable and uh, x1 and so on, xn are called independent variables. Uh, and uh, betas are coefficients. Uh, and uh, this model uh, is uh, very useful and uh, it is uh, very often used in uh, the whole, uh, the whole um, bunch of sciences. Uh, but in the linguistical study, we are, um, you know, we um, are interested uh, often uh, not only in uh, numeric variables, but also in uh, categorical variables. So you see from this formula uh, that this is just a kind of arithmetic expression uh, that uh, we have some uh, numbers here, and we have numbers here, and we have number here. Uh, so uh, we see that we need numeric variables here to make this relation work. Uh, in basic uh, linear regression works only with numeric data. But uh, it is possible that uh, we have uh, some non-numeric data, some categorical data, uh, and we want to include this categorical data into our model in some way. Uh, actually, it is um, a general problem, uh, the problem uh, with categorical data because, well, uh, everything here is based on math and math works mostly with uh, numbers, uh, but categories is some strange object for our mathematical methods. But uh, we, it's possible that we are really interested in uh, how to include uh, this uh, categorical data, data that is expressed uh, in terms of categorical variables into our uh, linear models. And um, let us discuss how can we do it. Uh, for example, let me introduce uh, some fictional data. Uh, how to include categorical data. Uh, let us assume that uh, we have uh, some, some data uh, like age uh, and for example, uh, bilingualism uh, and um, okay, uh, and we have some dependent variable like uh, some reaction time. 
uh, let us assume that we are studying uh, again some, uh, we do some um, psycholinguistical experiment and we just uh, try to find uh, how, uh, how this reaction time on some kind of stimuli uh, depends uh, on uh, the person's age and depends on uh, is it true that this person is bilingual or not bilingual. Uh, so this bilingualism can be uh, just uh, either true or false, for example. Something like this. And we have um, respondents of different ages. And we have different reaction times. Uh, so we have uh, a table like this in our data. Uh, and now I, I want to use this reaction time as my, uh, in the, is my, as my dependent variable as uh, y. I want to predict the reaction time using this age and this uh, variable bilingualism. Uh, and uh, I can assume that some kind of linear relation uh, should uh, present. Uh, and so try to try to uh, use this linear model. But uh, I have to take into account this information in some way. Uh, how to do it? How to include this uh, bilingualism uh, variable into my into my model? So I want uh, a kind of model like reaction time. Uh, is some function of H and uh, bilingualism. So um, how to do, any ideas? Of course, I, uh, I can write something like uh, correction time uh, equals to beta naught plus beta one H. And uh, this is uh, perfectly okay, uh, but I cannot uh, just write, um, I cannot just use this uh, variable bilingualism because it is not a numeric. And uh, I want here some kind of arithmetic expression. Uh, what to do? Uh, transfer false and true to zeros and ones. Yes, this is, this is actually what, uh, what is usually done uh, in this case. Actually, this is a very natural uh, way to encode categorical variable that uh, takes only two uh, possible values. This is called binary variable. Uh, and uh, we can add uh, a new variable here. Uh, so uh, this, uh, this variable takes values true and false. And we can create a new variable that will take values ones and zeros. So let me uh, at beta two uh, times uh, d, and here the link through. So you may ask the, the question. Uh, yes, mm, maybe in this case it's not very significant. But what we will do if, for some uh, reasons, we have three meanings of uh, uh, this? Yeah. Yes, that's a, uh, like that's, no a good, that's a good question. Uh, that's a good question, and we will discuss it uh, just in a second. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, so uh, this is this is a good question. Yes. Um, so currently, we just transform uh, our variable into new variable. Uh, like uh, this variable is called d. Um, we link true. Uh, and uh, so this variable takes values uh, ones and zeros, something like this. Um, and we use this new variable instead of this old variable. Uh, we see that this new variable uh, transfers the same information as uh, this variable. So we have just a kind of one-to-one -one, uh, encoding. We can recover uh, the value of this variable from this variable. Uh, 
uh, this uh, this thing uh, is called uh, is usually called a dummy variable. Uh, this is dummy variable. And uh, now uh, we have a perfect linear model uh, with respect to these two variables. Uh, to continue, let us discuss how to interpret this coefficient. Uh, let me let me draw uh, two lines. Sorry, I have a question so far. Yes. So yes. this uh, dummy variable is uh, like se separator, uh, and uh, we distinguish uh, this uh, ones and zeros from uh, other uh, digital uh, variables. Uh, well, uh, here, uh, here in this regression equation. I treat uh, I treat this variable just like any other numeric variable, but uh, I understand that this variable is uh, created uh, to represent uh, the value of this categorical variable. Uh, okay. But uh, but mm -hmm. if, for example, we will have a reaction time, for example, we mm -hmm. will have also uh, zero seconds and uh, one second, mm -hmm. uh, and. Uh, um, these two variables uh, will be different. It will be different zeros and different. Uh... Uh, yes. Uh, well, basically, basically, if you have reaction time, uh, it is a, a kind of. It will be measured in some uh, in some like milliseconds, uh, for example. Uh, so basically, if you have two different columns, uh, mm -hmm. different variables, uh, then. Um, Probably these two columns uh, just represent numbers, represent values uh, that are measured uh, using different uh, uh, different units. So, for example, if you have one column which is uh, which is uh, like kilometers and uh, another column which is uh, uh, minutes, then uh, basically these are different numbers. They are you, you cannot do arithmetic operation between them. You cannot compare them. So. Basically, this is more or less the same thing. Yes, if you have uh, if you have zero here, it is not the same as zero here, mm -hmm. just because it has different meaning uh, and different. Uh, it is okay, and we shouldn't worry about it. Yes. Yes, so, we shouldn't worry about okay. it. Yes, because actually, uh, uh, actually, if you uh, let us assume that we have some model, uh, for example, that uh, that involves age uh, plus, uh, for example, weight. Uh, and we have here some uh, other variable like reaction time. Uh, then uh, reaction time will be measured, uh, for example, in milliseconds, age will be measured in years, and uh, weight will be measured in kilograms. Uh, but uh, this, uh, this, is, this is correct uh, just because uh, this coefficient will also uh, have some uh, some dimension. Uh, we will, you know, for example, we will measure, uh, we will measure beta 2, uh, the correct measurement unit for beta 2 is um, kilograms, uh, sorry, uh, uh, milliseconds per kilogram. Uh, so when you multiply this value by this value, you will have milliseconds, and uh, and so on. So this coefficient will also be measured in different units. Okay. Uh, this is. I I just uh, have a thought that uh, we cannot uh, mix uh, numeric variables and uh, categorical ones, but maybe it uh, will have an influence on. Uh, uh, tests, and that is why I just. Um, well, uh, we can we can mix them uh, if we if we understand what we are doing, and uh, this is actually a way to uh, to do this mixing. And uh, now we will see how it works. Mm -hmm. okay? Thank you. Uh, 
so uh, well, actually it, it is a good question because actually it is a common uh, a common um, misinterpretation of uh, these coefficients uh, because sometimes uh, people write uh, something something like okay from the regression we see that this coefficient is larger than this coefficient uh, and uh, uh, they conclude that um, uh, this variable uh, uh, has larger effect uh, to this variable than this variable. Uh, but uh, it doesn't make sense because you cannot compare, for example, these coefficients just because they can be in different, in different units of measure. Uh, and actually, uh, this is a very common mistake. Uh, okay, uh, so let us continue with our original. Uh, model. Uh, so let us uh, discuss how to interpret uh, how to interpret this beta two. Uh, to do so, let me draw a couple of graphs. Uh, let me assume that I want to draw a two straight lines. Uh, let me let me use some values. Uh, assume that beta naught uh, equals to uh, 10, beta one equals to two, and beta two equals to um, negative one. Uh, so uh, now I can uh, draw a couple of graphs. Uh, so I will have H here and reaction time here. Uh, and uh, I want to, to draw two different graphs. Uh, in one graph, uh, I use uh, uh, I use the following. Uh, I want to draw a graph of reaction time uh, depending on year uh, on on age uh, when bilingualism uh, equals to false. Uh, how our curve uh, will uh, will look uh, will look like. So let me put some numeric values here, like one, two, three, four. Okay, I don't want uh, so large uh, beta naught. Uh, assume that beta naught is uh, it's just one. Uh, so, uh, let me assume that uh, I believe in this model, and now I see, uh, and, and now I want to draw uh, a graph of this function uh, as a function of this variable uh, of this variable, uh, assuming that uh, bilingualism equals to false. So I consider only. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, I consider uh, uh, currently currently these values are just uh, uh, I just uh, put some uh, arbitrary numbers. Uh, when we work with data, we get these uh, variables from the data using uh, minimization of least squares or some other fitting procedures. So we fit our model to the data. But currently, I just uh, want to discuss the model itself to not to think about the data, but just to think about the model itself. Uh, so uh, I want to uh, construct two, I want to construct two graphs. Uh, one graph that uh, gives me uh, the relation between this variable and this variable, uh, provided that uh, bilingualism falls, and another graph uh, that uh, con uh, considers the same relation, but uh, for bilingualism true. What can we say about uh, these two graphs? Let us, uh, let us begin with uh, this graph. Reaction time of H, provided that bilingualism falls. How the graph uh, will look like. Any ideas, anybody? One plus uh, uh, twice X. 
yes. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. So we can uh, we can write uh, it uh, as an equation. So in this case, uh, we have just y equals to uh, one plus two x, and the corresponding graph uh, will be. So if this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four. Okay, two. Too much. So we will have a straight line like this. Uh, why we have this relation? Uh, we have this relation and we put uh, beta naught uh, here, uh, beta one here. Uh, and uh, we see that if uh, Billing values is false, uh, then this variable is zero. So we don't have this term at all. So we have this straight line. Uh, now, what about uh, the opposite case? Uh, when we have a uh, reaction time of H provided that bilingualism uh, is true. So for bilinguals, uh, what can we say for bilinguals? What will be the equation in this way, uh, in this case? Just two X because B zero and B two like uh, disintegrate each other, like d delete each other. No? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, if uh, in this case we have the following equation uh, y equals to 1 plus 2x uh, plus negative 1 times 1. Because uh, in this case, this variable will be a 1. And uh, if this uh, beta two e equals to negative one, we have this uh, term here. So uh, we will have this curve. So uh, in other uh, in other uh, words, uh, we say the following: uh, We believe that uh, for uh, bilingualism uh, for, for bilinguals uh, and not bilinguals, the relation between reaction time and age uh, is um, just uh, some uh, linear relation, but uh, it is uh, shifted uh, for bilinguals. So uh, for monolinguals, we have uh, we have this curve and uh, this curve, and for bilinguals, we have this curve. One is just a shifted version of another. So, uh, uh, how to interpret uh, how to interpret this value of beta two? What is beta two? How can we interpret it? Anybody? Adjust, uh, adjust of, uh, yes, uh, it, can be, it can be seen uh, as the adjustment of the intercept term because uh, as you see, it just shifts, uh, shifts uh, our uh, straight line uh, to the arp or to uh, down. Uh, okay, but uh, if we just uh, think uh, think in the terms of uh, the original problem, if we think uh, about this reaction time, this age, uh, and we think uh, about two groups of people, uh, in one group uh, we have bilinguals and in another group we have monolinguals. Uh, what is uh, beta two in terms of this, in terms of these uh, two groups of people? Mm -hmm. 
I can say something like uh, that beta two is uh, a difference uh, in the difference uh, between mean reaction time of uh, bilinguals and monolinguals uh, of uh, the same age. So basically uh, this beta two is just uh, this difference. Uh, this is beta two. This is the coefficient uh, near our dummy variable. Everybody agree with me? Does it make sense? Are there any questions in this part? Isn't it a time to talk about uh, several variables, not zero and uh, one, but mm -hmm. Zero, one, two, three, four. Yes. Uh, let us let us just uh, let us just uh, move straight uh, straight in the case of uh, categorical vari uh, variables with several levels. Let us let us discuss it. Let us now assume that we have uh, another model. Uh, let us assume that we have, uh, for example, again uh, some reaction time, and uh, we have age and we also have some something like city uh, and this city can be Moscow, St. Petersburg and Novosibirsk. So I'll assume that we have three, three possible values of this uh, city variable and again we have uh, some ages uh, here and some reaction time. Something like this. Uh, and now we want to take into account uh, this variable city. How to do it? Uh, yes, let me return to uh, to the question. Uh, in the case both linear relationships are not parallel ones, uh, well, it is possible. Uh, it is possible to assume, for example, that uh, we have two uh, different lines with different uh, with different slopes. So, in this model, uh, we have uh, the same slope uh, for both categories of people. It is basically possible that we have different slopes for different uh, category of people. Uh, then, uh, if we assume that we have this uh, um, yeah, this thing, then uh, the, actually here the only thing that we can do is just to consider uh, both groups separately. If we don't have uh, the same slope, we have to fit just one curve. Uh, one straight line and another straight line and and get this new model with just two different straight lines for two different uh, groups uh, but uh, it is uh, sometimes uh, station is uh, more complex and uh, we'll discuss it later uh, again when we will discuss interacting terms uh, so-called interactive terms so uh, sometimes uh, it is possible to take into account even not parallel shifts, but some more complex, uh, more complex relations. Uh, so uh, now let us return here. Uh, so how to encode this city variable to include it into linear model?
in the same way just um, for moscow is one for st petersburg is two for novosibirsk is three and so on. um yes uh it is basically possible to do it but uh this is not what people uh, usually do uh because uh if you do this kind of uh encoding uh you introduce some relation between these values uh for example uh, if you if you use this encoding you see that you have for example you have difference between moscow and st petersburg and it is the same difference as from st petersburg to novosibirsk uh, and uh, you have some order between these uh, categories. But if we have just three cities, there is no uh, any natural relations between these three cities and there is no any natural um, order. Uh, so it is actually, uh, if we introduce this encoding, we introduce some additional assumptions. And this is not uh, actually uh, clear how to how to interpret uh, these these assumptions. So this is not what people usually do in this case. Um, basically, from mathematical point of view, you can do it, no problem. You just replace one column with another column. But uh, when uh, you will get the results. Um, it will be difficult to interpret uh, these results. It will be difficult to interpret uh, the value of the coefficient that uh, you will obtain. Uh, for example, here uh, we said that this coefficient beta 2 is just a difference between uh, reaction time between two groups. This is uh, a thing that is easily interpreted. But in this case, if we get some coefficient, uh, Okay, it will be something like average between Moscow and St. Petersburg and at the same time, average between St. Petersburg and Novosibirsk. And probably it will be different differences. Um, so uh, it is not used usually, uh, not used in linear regressions. Maybe we can create a code. So, for example, Moscow will be double zeros, St. Petersburg uh, will be zero one, and Novosibirsk will be just double one. Yes. Uh, this is uh, this is uh, what really what really people use in this case. Uh, we can encode this variable uh, with several new variables, several dummy variables. Uh, so we do the following. We can introduce new variables. Uh, for example, we can introduce variable city Moscow. And we can introduce uh, variable city St. Petersburg. And Uh, do we need the third column? We have three possible values here. Uh, no, the mm. third variant will be just... It is clear without the third column. Yeah, uh, we see that if I just put uh, two zeros here, then it means that it is Novosibirsk. Uh, so again, I have uh, one to one encoding. And uh, in this case, this one to one encoding does not introduce uh, any new assumptions like here, because uh, we, we create new variables for uh, these levels and these variables are in a sense independent. Uh, so uh, this, is, this is what usually uh, done. Uh, this is called dummy encoding. And now let us again try to think uh, a bit about uh, the interpretation of the following of the corresponding coefficients. Uh, again, uh, now we have the following model. Uh, we have something like correction time. 
equals to beta naught plus beta one H uh, plus beta two dummy city Moscow. And plus beta three dummy city Saint Petersburg. So you may have may have a question about inter. I mean, um, if we will try to may may the, to draw a graph of that. Mm -hmm. um, it's not obvious how to let's see how can we interpret this graph if we don't know the how to say the sub parameters of the uh, graph we just know what is the meaning of the uh, of the two axes but we don't know the uh, these um, coefficients and uh, sub parameters is it okay for, for graph interpretation. I'm not sure that I, uh, I understand your question. I mean... Maybe you can ask it in Russian. Well, I'm not helping you, but I had a little bit of a problem. When we work with years, the numbers are in a real sense, 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 истинные величины в цифры, мы же как бы получаем немножко разнородные цифры, то есть это не то же самое, что и год. И вот как в таком случае, нормально ли это, что мы их просто так складываем, а не пытаемся как-то раз, ну, вот как размасштабировать это, что ли? Вот, вот это немножко смущает. Ну, смотрите, а, смотрите, я думаю, что сейчас мы обсудим интерпретацию этих величин бета-2 и бета-3, и, может быть, станет понятнее. Да. Окей, so, uh, let us, uh, let us uh, discuss interpretation of this beta 2 and beta 3. Uh, probably uh, after that, uh, we, it will be more clear uh, why uh, we can just introduce uh, these variables into our model. Uh, so, again, uh, let us uh, think about, now we have three groups of people. And uh, basically, we have three different relationships. Uh, we have this relationship between reaction time and age for one group, for another group, and for third group. For, for Moscow citizens, for St. Petersburg citizens, and for Novosibirsk citizens. Um, let us uh, draw again. Uh, again, uh, we see that if I fix a group, so if I fix the value of a variable city, uh, then uh, these uh, values will be also fixed. So uh, this term uh, will be fixed. And it means that uh, for fixed group, for fixed city, the relation between this reaction time and age uh, will be linear uh, with uh, the same slope for all three groups. So I will get three lines. Like uh, I have one line, this, for example, for uh, people of Moscow. So here, city. I will have another line, for example, this, for city. Uh, St. Petersburg, and I will have a, a third line uh, all these lines uh, have to be parallel and because they have the same uh, beta 1 coefficient so I try to draw them parallel and this is city Novosibirsk So I have these three lines, these three linear dependencies. Uh, now let us discuss uh, the interpretation of these uh, coefficients beta 2 and beta 3. Uh, let me ask you, for example, uh, assume that I have two people 
of uh, the same age uh, two persons of the same age and uh, first person Uh, is from Novosibirsk and second is from St. Petersburg. So we have a difference uh, in uh, their city variable, in this categorical variable, and uh, this difference is uh, as follows. Uh, the first is from Novosibirsk and the second is from St. Petersburg. What can you say uh, about the difference between their reaction time according to our model? Uh, sorry, could I ask you? Yes. Uh, uh, is it the same, uh, okay, could we get the same result if we make a comparison in pairs? Just for example, Moscow and Novosibirsk uh, versus Moscow and St. Petersburg and versus Moscow, etc. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, yes. Actually, uh, we will have now information about uh, three differences, but it will be encoded just in two numbers. Uh, actually, actually, we will actually these values, uh, in a sense, compare different groups. And uh, in fact, to, to encode these three differences, we need uh, uh, just two numbers, uh, just this beta two and beta three. We will uh, we will see how it works just in a second. Um, uh, yes, uh, Saint Petersburg results uh, result is larger than Novosibirsk results, just according to this graph. Uh, but um, my question is, in terms of uh, these values. Uh, what can you say about uh, this difference? So uh, let us uh, let us uh, write the corresponding equations uh, for for the first. We have the following equation: Our reaction time uh, equals to b to naught plus beta one times h. Okay, uh, this uh, this person is from Novosibirsk. It means that, uh, what can you say about values of this variable for this person? So this is dummy variable that checks that city is Moscow. And if city in fact is Novosibirsk, uh, then this that variable equals to zero. So we don't have this term. And in the same way, we don't have this term. So plus beta two times zero plus beta three times zero. Now for the second. Again, we have reaction time equals to beta naught plus beta one H. Uh, and what uh, we have here for the second uh, person who is from St. Petersburg. Uh, what should I write here? I just used this model. Uh, three times uh, one. Yes. Uh, again, uh, if this person is from St. Petersburg, then it means that this variable is zero, but this variable is one. So I can just put beta two times uh, zero plus uh, beta three times one. And uh, let me return to the question of what is the difference between their reaction time. Uh, we see two formulas for these reaction times and everything is the same in these two formulas with the only exception. The only exception is that here we have this beta three and here we have zero. 
So uh, the difference is exactly beta three. Everybody agree? So, uh, in other words, we can interpret uh, this beta 3 as uh, the difference in reaction time for people of the same age between uh, people uh, of St. Petersburg and people of Novosibirsk. So, this beta 3 is uh, basically just this difference. Okay. Everybody agree? Okay, then uh, I have a question. Uh, how to interpret this beta 2? What is beta 2? Is this uh, St. Petersburg and Moscow difference? Uh, no, uh, it is not difference between St. Petersburg and Moscow. Now, again, let us, uh, let us look. If I want to find this beta 2, then it means that uh, I want to compare uh, reaction time uh, for a person uh, for who I have this term uh, equals to beta 2. Uh, with another person uh, for whom uh, I don't have any terms here at all. Uh, yes, uh, yes, Fyodor is correct, uh, because uh, this is the difference between uh, people uh, of Moscow and people of Novosibirsk. Uh, do you see that? Mm -hmm. uh, just because, uh, just because, uh, again, we can do, uh, we can do the same, uh, the same thing, uh, but uh, instead of, uh, I, I want to put uh, one not here, but here. If I put, uh, if I put one here, uh, then uh, I will compare person from Novosibirsk uh, for who this formula uh, takes place according to our model uh, with a person from uh, Moscow, uh, for who uh, this formula with one uh, with one here and zero here uh, will take place, and uh, the difference uh, exactly equals to uh, beta two. So uh, everybody agree. And then the difference between uh, Moscow and Novosib and Saint Petersburg would be uh, some relation of beta two and beta three, right? Exactly, exactly. It is, uh, it will be uh, like a difference between between the two values with correct signs and uh, we have to, we have to be accurate with signs here. But yes, uh, this is, uh, this is exactly what, uh, what you're saying. So this is the, this difference and it is a difference between this uh, thing and this thing. Hey, so in such situation we uh, when we are creating a code for our variables, uh, we have uh, some um, basic variable for us, it is Novosibirsk, and then yes. we just count from, from this variable. Yes, exactly, uh, exactly. This, uh, this, uh, in this case, actually, uh, this value is called uh, something like base level, so uh, when you introduce this dummy encoding, uh, the variable that uh, for which uh, the corresponding dummy variable is not created uh, constitutes uh, this base level. And uh, each coefficient, uh, for example, coefficient for this variable 
uh, is the coefficient that shows the difference between Moscow and base level. And in this case, base level in, is no CBS. And uh, this is true for all other variables. Uh, so uh, we have base level, and then we just compare the corresponding values with uh, this base level. Uh, just, uh, just let me a second to turn on the light. And uh, in fact, uh, there is, uh, in fact, there is some, um, how to say in English, произвол. Uh, some arbitrary decision uh, uh, that we do when we decide uh, which value to declare uh, a base level. Uh, actually, this can be done in different possible ways. Uh, but basically, if we are interested just in these coefficients, and these differences, uh, this um, arbitrary decision uh, does not affect uh, anything because uh, these values are just uh, these values are just differences, and we can find a uh, difference between uh, the uh, between these two uh, these two lines just by finding difference between these two uh, lines. So these two values. So. Basically, you can uh, just do some manipulations and you can switch from one base level to another base level. Uh, so in most of cases, we are not much interested in which level to declare as a base level, but sometimes we are. Uh, so um, let, me, let me ask you, what can you say about the reaction time of a person of age zero who is from Novosibirsk. It should be negative. Uh, yes, but uh, how to express it in terms of values in this, in this formula? So uh, if it is so if I, if I want a reaction time of a person with age zero and a city Novosibirsk, if I use just this formula. So it's just B to zero. Yes, exactly. This is just B to zero. So uh, this is interpretation of this B to zero. And we see that we can think about these coefficients uh, as um, uh, some changes in this uh, in this beta zero. So this is this is changes in intercept. Each group corresponds to uh, its own intercept, uh, and uh, these intercepts are different uh, using this uh, beta two and beta three. Uh, Sara, uh, I don't understand your question about intervals. Yeah, well, uh, currently we just think about this model. So we just, uh, we just try to analyze uh, this model when we believe in this model. Of course, uh, again, uh, we understand that every model uh, has uh, its limited scope, that we cannot just uh, use linear model and extrapolate its predictions uh, outside of uh, the, some interval where this model uh, works, where we have some evidence that shows us that this model works, where we have data. Um, so, uh, of course, of course, some negative intercept here or negative reaction time is something that does not make sense from the point of view of uh, our real world situation. Just like negative scores uh, of students, uh, if we extrapolate them using linear 
linear model. But uh, from uh, if we believe in this model, yes, it will be negative, but it does not make sense. Um, okay, now, now let me consider uh, another another sorry uh, yes yes just one question uh, can we infer the difference between moscow and st petersburg uh, in this model with uh, no sibirsk as base level yes sure because uh, we just uh, we just have to okay uh, let me uh, let me calculate it exactly so difference so uh, beta beta 2 is difference between moscow this is uh, Moscow minus Novosibirsk. Yes. Uh, beta three is uh, Saint Petersburg minus Novosibirsk. Uh, so I can just uh, I can just subtract these two relations and see that the difference between Moscow and Saint Petersburg is a beta two minus beta three. So this is a way uh, to infer this difference. Sometimes it can be a little bit trickier uh, when we discuss significance of the corresponding coefficients. Uh, but um, actually, I think that I prefer uh, to use a different method to estimate the significance, uh, the method that is based on ANOVA test, and we will discuss uh, it later probably. Okay, so uh, does it make sense for you? So the difference between Moscow and St. Petersburg is just a difference between these two values. Okay, uh, then uh, let us continue with uh, the following, the following story. Uh, this is called interaction terms. Uh, let us assume that uh, we are studying uh, some effect of different uh, educational programs uh, in different schools. And we have uh, two types of schools. Uh, we have uh, we have like public schools, we have school, and it can be either public or private. And we have program, educational program, and it can be either regular or innovative. Uh, and we have uh, some results of the students uh, on this program, like score, some numeric variable. And now let us assume that uh, I'm studying uh, this score, uh, how this score depends on uh, this school type and this program type. And I will use linear regression uh, to do it. And then uh, I can do it in the following way. Uh, I can consider uh, dummy encoding for both variables. Actually, they are binary variables, so I need just uh, one dummy variable for each of the original variables here. And uh, I will get the following model. Score equals to beta naught plus uh, beta one times dummy variable that corresponds to condition school private. And then, uh, uh, and then I have another term, beta two that corresponds to condition uh, that program is innovative.
Um, so now I believe in this model and uh, I want to interpret uh, these betas. Uh, to do so, uh, let me introduce the following table. Uh, I have school and I have program. Uh, so school can be public or private and program can be regular or innovative. And uh, now I want to put uh, the corresponding predictions of my model uh, into uh, these cells. Uh, what can you say uh, about a score of students uh, from public schools uh, who use a regular pro uh, program? What can I say about uh, the corresponding value here? Beta zero. This is beta zero. Uh, because if a uh, school is public, then this dummy variable is zero. And if program is regular, then this dummy variable is zero. So uh, this value is exactly just this beta zero. Everybody agree? Okay. Then uh, what can you say about, um, about uh, this cell? What should I put in this cell? Regular, private. Regular pro uh, program, private school. Beta zero plus beta one. Exactly. Uh, so here I just put beta zero plus beta one uh, because we have uh, this variable is zero and this variable is one. So we have this thing here. Okay, now what about, what about this? Anybody? That is beta one? Uh, here, uh, here I have the following case. Uh, I have public and innovative. Uh, and it means that uh, the value of uh, this variable is zero. And the value of this variable is one. So uh, value here is uh, beta naught plus beta two. So uh, we can interpret, uh, we can interpret now uh, the corresponding coefficients. Uh, for example, uh, beta one is difference Uh, difference between private and public schools. Or we can say that beta one is effect of private school. So this is what uh, differs private schools from public schools. And uh, what is beta two? How can we interpret this beta two? This is difference between, between what and what? Regular and innovative. Yes, between innovative and regular. So this is effect of program, effect of innovative program. Innovative and uh, regular pro program. Okay, so we have two effects, effect of a school and effect of a program. Uh, then uh, what should we write if we believe in this model? What should we write here? in the last column, uh, in the last cell, yeah. 
uh, Yelena is correct. Uh, this is just a sum of beta one uh, of beta uh, zero, beta one, and beta two. Uh, just according to this formula, if we have in this cell, uh, then these two values are just equals to one. So we have a sum of three terms. This is what we have here. So, uh, in other sense, uh, when we uh, when we write down this relation, uh, we believe in uh, in some kind of additivity or linearity of our effects. It means that if we compare scores of students uh, in private in 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 and innovative uh, in private school and innovative program, uh, we expect that this uh, score, uh, the difference between this score and uh, this score uh, is just a sum of two effects, of effect of private school and effect of innovative school. So we believe that these effects are additive. We just add some value when we, uh, when we switch from public school to private school and we add some value when we switch from public to innovative. And, but if we do both, then we just add both terms. So uh, in this model, um, in this model, we believe in this model, we assume uh, that school effect and program effect uh, are additive. Uh, in, in other sense, it means that they do not interact with each other. But uh, it is possible that this model is incorrect. Uh, for example, it is possible uh, that um, assume that uh, we have um, teachers in private schools who have more time and uh, less workload, and teachers in public schools who have uh, um, low salaries, uh, a lot of workload, and um, assume that we have this innovative program uh, that works only in the case uh, when a teacher uh, spends a lot of time to, to master this innovative program. In this case, it is possible that uh, just switch from public to private school uh, will give you some gain uh, in the score. Uh, but it is possible, for example, that switch from regular to innovative program for public school will be very small. But for private school, it will be large. Uh, this model says that uh, in this situation is impossible. So this, this model just uh, says that there is no interaction between uh, these two effects. But if uh, there are this, inter uh, but if uh, this interaction exists and we want to take it into account, we have to consider a different model. Uh, can anybody suggest me a model that takes into account this interaction between two, between two effects. If I want to uh, consider additionally a case when we have uh, both private school and innovative uh, program. How to take into account it? Uh, maybe we could um, uh, merge uh, like two uh, uh, these two parameters in the in a single one, and, and uh, thus that would that would be beta not plus uh, beta one uh, uh, multiplying on uh, d, and the and this d would have uh, four. 
uh, for uh, possible values like regular public, regular private, innovative public and innovative private and uh, they are uh, there uh, um, so uh, 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 now we have to no, learn. This wouldn't, wouldn't work. Uh, actually, actually, uh, something like uh, like that you propose uh, will work. Uh, now we have these two variables, but we can introduce another variable and uh, just we just have to do it correctly to take into account this interaction. Any ideas which variable we want to add to our model? Which term, better say? Ah, uh, if we add a beta three, that uh, would be a, um, like a, a, a difference between uh, what between the result that. Uh, should be uh, uh, like in this uh, cell of innovative public, mm -hmm. uh, but um, yes, between di the difference, the uh, like uh, the difference that sh should uh, should be there and the real um, uh, real value that uh, uh, th th that we have, mm -hmm. like. Yeah. So, uh, like we have to add, uh, like we have to add a new term here. Like we have to add beta three here, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. And how to and how to add beta three here in terms of our original model? Uh, I mean, we have uh, we would have a third um, dummy variable that yes. should be uh, sh should uh, have uh, uh, that should be. Uh, that should have a value one uh, when this is innovative and private. Uh -huh. Yes, I think that we can uh, we can create uh, this new dummy variable just from uh, these dummy variables that we already have. Yes, we can uh, we can just consider this product. So uh, I will add a, a new term in my model. Uh, that will be a, a beta three times a product of two dummy variables. Uh, when uh, this product equals to one, only in the case when both variables equals to one. So this is exactly what you what you want to do. Uh, so uh, let us consider this new model. Uh, let me uh, draw the same the same table as before. School. Work. Public, private. Regular, innovative. So. Uh, what is the difference between this table and this table? If I add this term to my model. Actually, uh, in these three columns, uh, in these three cells, uh, the value of this uh, variable equals to zero. Uh, because if uh, at least one of this variable uh, is zero, then their product is zero. So in these uh, three cells, uh, I will get the same result as previously. Beta naught here, beta naught plus beta one, beta naught plus beta two. And what about the value here? What should I write here? So beta one plus uh, beta not plus beta one plus beta two plus beta three. Exactly, right. Uh, we see that uh, in this case we have uh, this value equals to one, this value equals to one, and this value equals to one. 
So all four terms uh, is presented here. So if we look at this table, we see that uh, again, uh, we have uh, this beta one, which is effect of, uh, which is effect of uh, school type. We have this beta two, which is effect of uh, innovation. And we have this beta three, which is effect of uh, interaction between uh, school type and innovation between uh, private schools and innovative programs. So this thing uh, is called interacting terms. Uh, so if you have several uh, dummy variables, uh, sometimes uh, it is useful to consider the interacting between them. If you if you expect that uh, this uh, interaction between the corresponding effects uh, can be uh, can be significant. Okay. Uh, are there are any questions? I failed to understand like why some variables are interactive. I mean, like why some variables are independent and some of them are not and uh, something that, that somehow it is significant. Um, how to be sure that um, there is a interaction and uh, well, uh, well, uh, we can, uh, for example, if we just think uh, about these interacting terms and if we have some data, uh, we can just, for example, try to fit this model with this interaction term and uh, uh, see uh, uh, if uh, the corresponding coefficient is significant or not. Actually, this is what R will say you. Uh, this is what R will tell you. Uh, if uh, we see that this term is not significant, probably we can just remove this term and uh, just use a simpler model. Uh, so if you have some data, then you can fit your model to the data and get some estimates for the corresponding coefficients. Uh, so uh, for example, if you, are, if you expect that uh, it is possible to have an interaction here, but if you are unsure if in reality, uh, there is such interaction or uh, there is no such interaction. Then you can try feed uh, this larger model to the data that you have. Uh, actually, you don't need any additional data. If you have this variable and this variable, you can construct this variable automatically. Uh, so you can feed uh, this model and check uh, if uh, this coefficient is significant according to our R's output or not and then make a decision. For example, if it is not significant, it means that you don't have enough evidence to uh, claim that uh, you have non-zero coefficient here. So it means that you basically, uh, you basically like um, in a situation when uh, this model is as good as this model. And then you can just switch to this simpler model. And how to understand that some model is good or bad? Well, there is no uh, universal uh, universal advice here. Um, basically, you want uh, you want your model uh, to be you want your model to be plausible for, from your domain knowledge perspective when you think about your the problem that uh, you are trying to solve. You have some, you have some assumptions. You have some theory that gives you some assumption that this thing can uh, can affect this thing and can it affect this thing. So, uh, or probably you have you have some uh, some prior assumptions from from some theory. Uh, then you can consider different models, and basically it is possible to it is possible to measure how good your model at uh, fitting of your data, uh, but uh, sometimes uh, the best fit is not what you are looking for. 
because if you consider a very complex model with a lot of parameters, it will fit to your data better than a simpler model without much of parameters. But if you think about a, a very complex model uh, that uh, is fit to your data, it can, uh, it can probably overfit. It can, it can be very good at fitting of your, of your data that you have now, but it will be bad at predicting some new data. At, it will be bad uh, at um, explanation of some relations between variables. So there is a trade-off between model complexity and uh, goodness of fit. Um, there is no universal answer here. Sometimes you just have to use some domain knowledge. Uh, sometimes you have to uh, just look at some visualizations and again use some common sense. Uh, sometimes you can use uh, sometimes you can use some formal procedures. For example, you can try to estimate um, how good uh, will be your model in predicting the data that it didn't see. Uh, either by using uh, something like uh, Akaki information criterion for uh, for linear models. Uh, so uh, for linear models, uh, there is a thing that is called uh, AIC. Uh, there is Akaki information criterion uh, that shows. Uh, how good is your model uh, at predicting values uh, for data that is not used during uh, to fit it. Uh, so, but I cannot, uh, I cannot say that you have every time to choose the model with better AIC. Sometimes, sometimes it is a good idea, but no universal advice is here. Mm. So, unfortunately, I don't have an ultimate answer. Okay, so yeah, let us make a 10 minutes break now, and then we will continue with some practice and probably if you will have more questions about theory, we will be able to, to discuss it as well. Okay, so we have 10 minutes break from now. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we have uh, beta naught plus beta one. We actually estimated beta one uh, as some value like 15. But uh, now I'm just interested in, in this formula. So uh, this is uh, beta naught plus beta one. So we have some point here. And this point is beta naught plus beta one. So uh, these red dots are predictions of our model. And uh, then we can consider residuals. Uh, for each value here, we can consider a residual, uh, the difference between the corresponding value in the data and uh, prediction of the model. Uh, so the residuals uh, will be these values. This thing, this thing. Uh, these are residuals. Difference between actual value and predicted value. So, uh, just to make sure that uh, everything is clear, uh, what is the number of residuals? Uh, in our study. How can we find the number of residuals? Each residual is just a number. How many of them we have? It's the same as the number of languages in our sample. 
Yes, exactly. The, the number of residuals is the same as the number of data in our, in our sample. Uh, so uh, these are residuals in this model. And if I return to uh, my R output, uh, then Uh, these values are just um, characteristics of residuals. Uh, so, for example, this is a median residual, and uh, this is a minimum value of these residuals, and this is a maximum value of these residuals. So, basically, in this model, uh, these residuals are just uh, a difference between uh, the value of uh, each, um, for each item and the average value in the corresponding group. And this is statistics, statistical data for these residuals. Does it have any, I don't know, like meaning that has, has a sense? Like if I see that maximum is 23, that means for me that it is very big and I know that something. Well, in, in some problems maybe, but in this problem, uh, I think that the, the only information that it gives, uh, it gives some information about uh, uh, deviation of uh, number of consonants and the average number of consonants in each of the of two groups of a group of adjective languages and not adjective languages so we have two groups we have average number of consonants in each uh, four languages in each groups and uh, this uh, gives you information about the differences between the corresponding values and the corresponding averages. So, uh, in this case, I don't know how to inter how to interpret it. Okay, uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, this standard error uh, gives you information about uh, about uh, estimated uh, standard error of this estimate. So, we understand that uh, these values are a kind of random variables because if you do the same kind of study but uh, with another sample of data from 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 the same from the same population uh, then you will get different estimates uh, this uh, thing measures uh, the standard error of these estimates uh, so basically we can uh, expect that the actual estimate uh, lies in a segment uh, like uh, this value uh, plus or minus two standard errors. This is a confidence interval uh, for these estimates. For example, uh, we see here uh, from this standard error uh, that uh, this estimate uh, is clearly non-negative, that it is uh, distinguishable from zero because the corresponding confidence interval is uh, somewhat between um, nine and um, 21. So it is, um, it is, uh, it does not contain zero. Uh, so we can, actually this is, this is the same, uh, the, an answer to the same question as uh, this, um, this thing gives you. Uh, we see that uh, the corresponding coefficient is significant. It means that it is not zero. The corresponding the corresponding coefficient is not zero. And so you can uh, you can see it from this uh, value, but you can also make the same conclusion just considering the corresponding confidence interval. And uh, this t value is actually is not very important for you. It is used uh, in calculation of this. Uh, p-value, but uh, it is not, it is not very important. Okay. Uh, so, uh, we see here that we applied our uh, linear regression and we can use uh, this linear regression to solve more or less the same problem as uh, we used, uh, uh, as the problem uh, for which we used t-test previously. Uh, now let us uh, consider something more interesting. 
uh, let me get uh, another data set. Okay. Let me try. Uh, I'm not sure that this uh, will work. Probably I have to download this file. No, uh, it doesn't work like this. Okay, uh, let me just uh, download this file. You can do it uh, also. And uh, then I will get it from my download folder. This is not a CSV, this is just another format that uh, R uses to store uh, the data. Uh, so I do not use read CSV here, but use a different function uh, load, uh, and it loads uh, this file into a data frame with the same name as the file. So this is the file named tv.rda. And so my variable is uh, tv. So can you do it? Download and then uh, load using this command. Uh, so in this uh, in this study, actually, actually, these data uh, these data are generated, but uh, they mimic uh, the following study. Uh, we are interested in uh, how good uh, uh, children um, are at languages, uh, depending on some information about uh, their uh, television hours, how. Uh, how often uh, they uh, watch TV and uh, how many hours uh, they watch TV on average uh, every day. And uh, there are some other information about uh, this imaginary children. And we want to find, uh, we want to find a relation between this CDI. Uh, this is uh, some uh, variable that measures uh, how good uh, uh, this uh, this child uh, is uh, in language, and um, we assume that this variable depends uh, on several other variables, uh, including this TV hours that we will be interested in, and also this book reading. Uh, we see that this book reading is categorical variable. Uh, let us uh, check uh, what is the levels of this categorical variable. We can use summary. We see that uh, there are one, two, three, four, five, six values of this variable, book reading. And uh, let us try to use a linear regression uh, that uh, estimates the value of uh, CDI. So this is uh, language proficiency. Um, based on TV hours, and uh, let us try to include this book reading into the corresponding regression. So you can try to do it uh, by yourself. So I want um, want the regression that estimates value of CDI using TV hours and book reading.
So uh, can you try please to do it? And tell me what happens. So, are there any questions? Which coefficients we should interpret? All? All, 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 all estimates. I got the result, but I don't know how to interpret it. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, let us uh, let us look. So let me try to do it. Uh, I have something like. So we have this CDI. Uh, CDI is our dependent variable we believe that this cdi depends on uh, tv hours and book reading so we have this Not on TV. So I need more space. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, in this case, uh, our model is like CDI uh, equals to some beta naught, uh, which is intercept, uh, then some coefficient times TV hours, uh, and uh, then uh, some coefficients uh, times to the corresponding dummy variables so we have uh a dummy variables uh five dummy variables that corresponds to six uh, levels of um, book reading categorical variable and uh, what can we say uh, we see for example uh, okay let us first uh, let us first consider uh, this coefficient uh, what can we say uh, about uh, interpretation of this negative coefficient? First of all, is it significant or not? Yes. Uh, how do you see it? Uh, just asterisk on the right. Yes, uh, actually uh, you see this p-value, oh, oh, which, p -value, yeah. uh, which is smaller than 5% uh, or you can just uh, consult with this uh, asterisk uh, that are and just a quick way to see all significant uh, variables. Uh, so it is significant and it is negative. So what does it mean? How can we interpret it? Uh, how can we interpret it? So it uh, differs from intercept. In intercept, we have uh, book reading uh, a little bit in a negative way. Mm. 
Um, let us just try to interpret this value. How can you interpret it? This is negative 0.12. So our model, uh, our model currently is the following. We believe that we have this CDI and uh, it is like beta naught plus beta one times uh, TVR uh, plus um, something, uh, dummy variables. The rest is dummy variables. And I'm interested in this part now. Uh, I'm interested in the interpretation of uh, this coefficient, which corresponds to this beta one. Uh, what it says, uh, how can we interpret in terms of our initial problem, how can we interpret it, for example, how can we interpret uh, its sign, it is negative, what does it mean? Is it good or bad to watch TV a lot for children from this study? So it lowers CDI. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, this uh, this result actually shows uh, the following: that uh, how can we interpret this uh, this value? We can interpret it in the following way: uh, interpretation. Um, if we consider two children with the same other variables. Uh, currently, the other variable is this book reading. Uh, that uh, differs in their TV hours by one. Uh, then those child uh, with larger TV hours uh, will uh, have smaller CDI and the difference in CDIs uh, is this value. So in other terms uh, it can be said that if um, if we if we understand what does it mean, then we can say something like every hour uh, of our TV decreases our CDI by this value, uh, provided that uh, reading uh, book reading uh, fixed. So if we if we consider two children with the same book reading then uh, for them this increasing TV hours will decrease CDI. Um, okay, uh, let us discuss now this, these variables. Please, can you remind what is CDI? Well, some, <clears throat> some value that measures um, uh, language proficiency. I'm not, uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't know how it is. Uh, what is the meaning of abbreviation, but some, some value that measures something. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, now we can consider this set of variables and we see that some of them are significant and some of them are not significant. And uh, this is actually, um, uh, this is actually a tricky question, uh, should we consider this variable significant or not. Um, basically, we can use uh, another test to do it. For example, I can try to use ANOVA. Let me try. So this is fit and I want uh, ANOVA of fit. I'm not sure that I remember how to do it. Okay, it works. 
uh, we can use this function uh, ANOVA, uh, analysis of variance, uh, not only to uh, test uh, something about uh, difference of some value between several groups, uh, we can use uh, the same function uh, to test uh, is it true that uh, our categorical variable is significant or not in uh, this linear regression. In this case, we consider this categorical variable uh, not by splitting it to dummy variables, but uh, as the whole, the whole categorical variable. Uh, I don't want to discuss how this function works right now, but just say that, uh, uh, that we see from this output that book reading is indeed significant. Uh, now we can try to interpret uh, these values, at least uh, those values uh, who are significant, for example, this value. Uh, what, uh, what it says? It says that we have a difference between which two groups. So this is a significant coefficient. It is positive. And uh, we have this value. And what is, uh, what is the base level for our model? We can actually try just to find, let me return to the summary of our data set. So uh, we see these possible values of uh, our variable book reading. And uh, what can you say uh, about the base level here in this regression? It is book reading, no? Book, book reading uh, is, is the name of variable. Uh, base level is the value of the corresponding variable the value for which we don't have the corresponding dummy variable because if all dummy variables equals to zero then it means that the only possible way to do it is uh, to have the value of our categorical variable to equals to the variable that is absent here so what is the base level Several time months. No, uh, we have several once, times. Once a month. Yeah, yes, uh, we, have, uh, we have several times a month uh, in the set of our dummy variables. So the base level is the level that is not presented here. And the only level that is not presented here is once a month. Uh, I think uh, I think this is once uh, once a month because we don't have once a month here. Uh, okay, Sarah, do you agree? Uh, so we have base level. Yeah, base level for uh, book reading is once a month. Uh, now, how can we interpret uh, this value? This is the only significant coefficient this is coefficient for this value. If we consider two children with the same, uh, oh, no. Mm -hmm. 
uh, with uh, uh, who reads uh, who read once uh, a month and uh, several times per day. Mm -hmm. um, there is a significant difference between these two groups and uh, uh, this child who uh, reads several times per day uh, reads better and this is this way this difference equals to one point mm -hmm. one dot uh, six mm -hmm. and something uh, yes mostly correct but uh, initially you you began with uh, the same formula uh, like here with the same something and uh, we have to preserve uh, this here uh, with the same uh, tv hours yes yes this is correct uh, with uh, the same TV hours. So uh, every time when we consider just one coefficient of linear regression, we, uh, it, it measures difference um, of our dependent variable uh, depending on the corresponding independent variable, but all, others, uh, all other variables should be, uh, should be fixed. So in this case, we have to fix TV hours and compare uh, compare uh, these uh, children with the same TV hours, uh, but uh, who are different uh, in their reading reading habits. Uh, so uh, the first one uh, reads uh, once a month. This is because uh, we have this level as a base level. And uh, the second reads several times per day because we have this variable several times per day. And uh, the difference and the letter will have larger CGI and the difference is this. So uh, basically uh, these results um, say as something like that if uh, if a child uh, watch a lot of TV, uh, then it decreases uh, their uh, CDI, and if they uh, read uh, a lot of books, it increases uh, their uh, their CDI. Something like this. Um, so this is an interpretation of our model. Uh, just to uh, let us consider a similar model without without this book reading variable, just to check what changes in this case. Excuse me, I think I have a question on yes. this. Sure. Uh, uh, also, the baseline is placed somewhere in respect to to the TV hours. Yes, and then. Uh, is it the <clears throat> is it uh, zero TV hours uh, or the minimum of of the sample? Uh, well, uh, th uh, there is an, uh, uh, no notion of uh, base level for numeric variables because numeric variables are substituted to our model as is. Um, so we have a notion of a base level just because uh, we introduce uh, this dummy encoding when we. Uh, replace our categorical variables uh, uh, variable with uh, several dummy variables. Uh -huh. Then, when we do this, uh, when we do this replacement, we have to uh -huh. choose uh, the base level, because, for example, if we have three uh, levels in our uh, categorical level uh, in our categorical variable, we will have only two dummy variables, mm -hmm. and uh, the um, and each dummy variable corresponds to one value of categorical variable and one value is not included and it is called a base level. Uh-huh. Uh, okay, so the, the, base, the base level, uh, the value uh, that uh, corresponding to the uh, base level uh, has the uh, value zero in this dummy variable 
Uh, yes, all, all dummy variables are zero. If if you have all dummy variables, okay, so you have a series. Uh -huh. if, uh, for example, here you have uh, you have five dummy variables. If all of these variables are zero, it means that book reading is not uh, this value, is not several times a month, mm -hmm. is not this value, is not this value, is not this value, and is not this value. So the only possible value for uh, book reading is uh, to be once a month. Yes. And this is why he, this level is called a base level in this case. Uh, yes, I, I got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so let me try to fit the same model, but with without uh, without book reading. I just want to see are there any differences. Uh, not so much difference. Uh, TV hours, uh, the estimate for TV hours is still negative. Uh, it is slightly larger here, um, uh, sorry, uh, slightly smaller here. You see that here it is uh, negative 15, uh, negative O dot uh, 15, uh, but here it is negative O dot uh, 20. Actually, this is a reasonable result. Uh, why, uh, why, uh, how can you explain it? So in this case, we just consider these two variables and we get more negative coefficient here. Uh, why do you think that uh, it is true? So uh, Y coefficient for TV hours uh, in this model is more negative than in the previous model. So uh, how can we interpret, what is the difference in interpretation of this coefficient uh, between these two models? This model and this model. Maybe in the first one we have some beta three, some um, different coefficient uh, that uh, tries to uravnyat. Kawa kawa. No, no, типа вот что мы говорили про interacting, как мы это называли. У нас есть новый коэффициент, который берет, ну, который как-то пытается уравнять влияние, и он такой не совсем аккуратный получается, и получается, что у нас, ну, как, в общем, закладывается какое-то право на ошибку, и поэтому у нас есть какая-то разница. Ну, у нас как бы всегда есть, у нас есть всегда право на ошибку, так что это неудивительно, но в данном случае можно предложить вполне реалистичное объяснение того, почему вот в этой модели акцент оказывается более отрицательным, чем в исходной модели. Uh, actually, uh, I, want, uh, I want to find, uh, well, we, uh, we can um, write uh, interpretation of this coefficient in this model and consider uh, the difference between two interpretations. Uh, so in this model, um, coefficient, um, uh, Sarah, uh, what uh, you're saying can be true if, uh, if, um, Sorry, maybe yes? we have some people who uh, watch TV uh, mm -hmm. a lot, but also read a lot, so, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, here in the second model, we doesn't count them, we mm -hmm. don't count them. Uh, we count we count all people in both models, so the data sets uh, is uh, is the same. What is the different is uh, which variable we take into account and which variable we don't take into account. 
And um, okay, let me let me write uh, the interpretation here. Um, it can be between group adjustment, as Sarah says, if we uh, put a correct meaning in this term between group adjustment. Uh, so uh, here, let me just try to to put this interpretation and uh, change it uh, in such a way that it corresponds to this model. So uh, I have this model and this interpretation. Uh, currently, this interpretation is just a copy, a copy of uh, the interpretation that was here. Uh, what should be fixed? What should be changed here? So this is the interpretation for the previous model. What should be changed here uh, for this interpretation to correspond to this model? So you should you should delete uh, 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 with the same book reading. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Uh, I should delete. Uh, so let me just and change the coefficient. Yes, uh, the coefficient uh, the coefficient is different now. Yes, I, I have to delete this part. I don't know how to delete in. In markdown. Okay. Uh, why should I delete it? Uh, because uh, this model does not take into account uh, variable book reading at all. So in this model, if I think uh, about uh, the interpretation of the coefficient for these TVRs, I just say, okay, I pick uh, two, uh, I pick two uh, children uh, that uh, are different in their TVRs. I do not fix the other variable because it is not presented in my model. I just compare two children with uh, different TVRs and then uh, the corresponding difference uh, in uh, CDI is 0 0.15, right, 0 0.15, yes. Uh, so uh, now we see that if, uh, e okay, so we have these two statements, uh, one statement and another statement. Let us uh, assume uh, that both statements are, are the same. So I delete here this book reading. And I believe that both statements uh, are true. How can we interpret this difference between this number and this number? Здесь сказано, что если мы рассматриваем двух людей с одинаковым уровнем книгочитания, отличающихся на единицу по телесмотрению, то у них вот так вот падает усвоение языка. А здесь сказано, что просто если мы рассматриваем двух людей, отличающихся по телесмотрению, то у них вот так вот падает значит, усвоение языка. Вопрос. Как это можно объяснить? Any ideas? Мне кажется, я знаю ответ, но не могли бы вы еще раз повторить вопрос, потому что мой интернет отказывается. Mm -hmm. Ну, вопрос такой, значит, в чем, в чем разница между вот этими двумя числами? То есть вот у нас есть два числа, которые соответствуют как бы ответам на два разные вопроса. Один вопрос вот такой, значит, рассматриваем двух разных детей с одинаковым книгочитанием, но отличающихся на единицу по телесмотрению. Смотрим на их разницу в языке. А другой вопрос такой. Просто рассматриваем двух разных детей, случайно выбранных, 
а, у которых разное телесмотрение. Теперь не фиксируем а, книгочитание. Оказывается, что вот эта разница больше, чем это. Вопрос, почему? Как, это, как теоретически можно было, было бы а, проинтерпретировать? Значит, в обоих случаях мы как бы детей выбираем произвольным, как бы случайным образом вот, там, из, из нашей группы. Но вот в этом случае мы специально требуем, чтобы дети хоть и были выбраны случайным образом, но чтобы у них был бы одинаковый уровень того, как они книжки читают. А в этом случае не требуем. Получаем разные результаты. Вопрос, почему? А, ну, получается, что мы, когда рассматриваем а, всех детей, независимо от уровня их книгочитания, у нас разброс больше, и как бы мы вот больше по... вот этот больше разброс объясняем а, а, вот этим, как, как вы сказали, телесмотрением. Ну да, есть такой, есть такой термин. Нет, ну такой, это официальный термин телесмотрения. А, звучит, конечно, смешно. А, ну, в общем, вот эти, вот эти самые переменные TV hours. А, так, окей. Okay. It, it, it was an answer that it can be explained by uh, some changes in variance, uh, variance but uh, I cannot agree, because uh, in any case we consider some average values. So uh, it can be a large variance or small variance, but anyway, we find, we just find an average. Uh, Sarah's suggestion was the same, uh, the same uh, that we have different variances. I cannot, uh, I cannot just attribute uh, this difference to variances. Um, Uh, this variance, this variance does not well. I cannot understand uh, from your from your interpretation. I cannot, I cannot see the effect. But I think that uh, here uh, the effect. Okay, this data is fake, but I think that those people who created this data, that they uh, had in their, uh, uh, They had some uh, idea in how they created uh, this data, and this idea is you know, very, uh, very simple, and it is very uh, plausible. It looks, it looks like this data is. It is what I expect here. So look, uh, if I have two people, if I have two children with different number of TV hours. Uh, what do you think? Uh, what uh, is their difference in their book reading habits? If I have, uh, if I have children who likes to look TV a lot, what, what, what would you expect about his reading habits? No reading habits. No reading habits. So. We probably, if if we consider these two variables, we can expect that those people who watch a lot of TV uh, read a small amount of books, and vice versa. So in this in in this case in in this model, we just consider two children with different TV hours. We can expect that. Uh, the children with larger value of TV hours read smaller amount of books. And here we fix this uh, book reading. So uh, we can say that it is good for children to read books. It is good for, uh, for, their, uh, for, for the corresponding CDI. Uh, if, if If uh, some child read a lot of books, it increases uh, their uh, CDI. So here, if we compare uh, two children uh, and uh, they different not only in um, TV hours but also in their uh, reading habits, uh, we uh, can uh, expect to see larger difference between them. Uh, than in this case, when their reading habits is fixed. 
So this is basically uh, what we expected to, to see. Uh, yes, it can, uh, it can, but it is important that uh, in this case, we just fix this uh, book reading effect. We just compare, uh, compare uh, children with the same book reading habits and we see how uh, TV hours uh, affect uh, their they language proficiency. Um, and uh, here we just see the effect of uh, our television. But here we affect, we see both effects. We see first effect that television uh, hurts their CDI. And another effect if that if uh, they look a lot of TV, they just don't have time to read books and it also decreases their CDI. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is, so this is, um, due to the fact that due to the correlation between tv hours and book reading yes exactly uh, exactly negative correlation exactly yes yes and if, least, if, mm -hmm. if it if it uh, would uh, um, not the case uh, then uh, this this number of uh, th these two numbers uh, would could be like equal well, yes, it is possible. Yes, yes. Uh, but actually, this is just my suggestion. We can uh, we can uh, check it. Uh, we can, for example, encode uh, this uh, this thing. Um, sorry. Uh, we can consider a, a kind of correlation between uh, be, be, between TV hours and this book reading. But we have to be accurate here because book reading now is. Uh, categorical variable, but it is obviously ordered categorical variable. So we can consider some kind of correlation and check uh, is my interpretation correct or not. By the way, uh, how how was it uh, uh, ordered this uh, this values of uh, book reading? Uh, currently, uh, currently for our current research for our regressions, we don't use uh, this ordering uh, because. We just convert uh, this uh, variable into several independent variables. Uh, so we, we, we don't use this ordering. But uh, probably we can try to use this ordering just to, just to find the corresponding correlation. But this is, this is a, a bit different, different part of the uh, research. Uh, here we don't use this ordering at all. We just think that these are just some different uh, categorical levels. Yes, but w was it made autom automatically? This no. no, 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 no. Um, there, is no uh, th there is no ordering in the data as uh, it is written now. I just use uh, my understanding of uh, these uh, labels to see that uh, there is a natural order because uh, I understand that once a day uh, is larger than once a week, and once a week is larger than once a month. Just because I can read and I uh, can understand the meaning of these uh, words. Yes. But just, uh, just from uh, our point of view currently, there is no such order at all. R doesn't know, uh, for now, R doesn't know about this order. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay. <laughs> Can we pin intercept? So now it just uh, random, but can we pin it somehow? Uh, uh, what do you mean? Uh, what do you mean pin? Закрепить. Я понимаю. Я не понимаю, что значит закрепить интерцепт. Что вы хотите с ним сделать? Вы хотите, чтобы интерцепт вот просто принудительно положить равным кончению? Заранее, заранее. Нет, 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 я хочу в интерсепт засунуть какую-то определенную... Я, конечно, понимаю, что это чаще всего все равно, но если вдруг мне понадобится засунуть рандомную величину... Сейчас, в смысле, вот, вот, вот сюда вот. Вы хотите, чтобы здесь было написано не 100, а не на 200? Нет, 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 я хочу, чтобы в переменной интерсепта был, например, TV hours. Сейчас, нет, не понимаю, что вы хотите сделать. 
Ну, Часто. вот сейчас у нас в интерсепте был что там, ну, не так важно, ну, например, чтение книг раз в день, а, раз в месяц у нас был. А, вот. я понимаю, сейчас, а я хочу, сейчас. чтобы... Вы вот, вы вот про, про эту модель. Короче, вы хотите, да, бейз, да, да, да. вы хотите base level поменять? Вот что вы хотите, наверное, сделать. Ну, вот да. То, как да, вы контролируете, да. то, как вы контролируете интерсепт вот в этой модели, это то, что вы можете поменять base level вот для этой переменной, например. Вот mm -hmm. у, у вас сейчас как бы base, у, у вас сейчас интерсепт содержит информацию про... Ну да, он содержит информацию про тех, кто... Раз читает, в месяц читает. читает раз в mm -hmm. месяц, и при этом он, они еще и телевизор не смотрят. Mm -hmm. Вот, у них TV hours 0, а вот эта mm -hmm. штука, вот эта штука once a month. Значит, можно поменять... Uh, so, uh, the question was about, can we change this, uh, this base level? And yes, it can be done, but I don't remember the uh, correct way how to do it. Relevel. Let me try. Let us try to use, for example, uh, an opposite way several times a day. Yes, it works. Mm -hmm. Probably. Okay. Yes, uh, you see that uh, when I added this uh, relevel function, now in this output uh, I don't uh, have uh, several times a day. Uh, so uh, now the name of the variable is this thing and uh, you see that we have once a month several times a month once a week several times once a day but we don't have this several times a day so uh, now this is a base level okay that's interesting that now we have uh, more more uh, significant variables here but yes this is possible Okay. So, are there other questions? Mm -hmm. Okay, then uh, that's all for today, I think. I hope that uh, at least something was understandable in this topic. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. <laughs> so uh, there is a question about the results. Okay, but uh, I think we can uh, uh, discuss it in private. Uh, okay, bye. Thank, bye. You. thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you.